Good day, and welcome to Shepherd's Way. I'm Robert O'Neill, pastor of Shepherd's Way Christian Church, where it is our heart to lead and care for people God's way. We hope you enjoy the message today, and we thank you for joining us. Glad to see you in the building this morning. I'm going to ask you to invite, invite you to turn with me and navigate with me to the book of 1 Samuel, the book of 1 Samuel. I'm going to be reading a portion out of chapter 1 and a portion out of chapter 3. First chance Samuel, chapter 1, a portion there, and then a portion in chapter 3. We're going to read God's word together. It's a little bit lengthy, but it'll be worth it at the end. We'll read and then we will pray together. And the word of the Lord reads like this. It says in 1 Samuel chapter 1, verses starting at verse 23. So the woman remained and nursed her son until she weaned him. And when she had weaned him, she took him up with her, along with a three-year-old bull, an ephod, a flower, and a skin of wine. And she brought him to the house of the Lord at Shiloh. And the child was young. Then they slaughtered the bull, and they brought the child to Eli. And she said, her name is Hannah, she said, Oh, my Lord, as you live, my Lord, I am the woman who was standing here in the presence of Pray in your presence, praying to the Lord, for this child I pray, and the Lord has granted me my petition that I made to him. Therefore, I have lent him to the Lord. As long as he lives, he is lent to the Lord, and he worshiped the Lord there. In chapter 3, verse 1 reads, Meanwhile, the boy Samuel served the Lord by assisting Eli. Now in those days, messages from the Lord were very rare, and visions were quite uncommon. One night, Eli, who was almost blind by now, had gone to bed. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was sleeping in the tabernacle near the ark of God. Suddenly, the Lord called out, Samuel. Yes, Samuel replied, what is it? He got up and ran to Eli. Here I am. Did you call me? I didn't call you, Eli replied. Go back to bed. So he did. Then the Lord called out again, Samuel. Again, Samuel got up and went to Eli. Here I am. Did you call me? I did not call you, my son, Eli said. Go back to bed. Samuel did not yet know the Lord because he had never, he never had a message from the Lord before. So the Lord called a third time. And once more, Samuel got up and went to Eli. Here I am. Did you call me? Then Eli realized it was the Lord who was calling the boy. So he said to Samuel, go and lie down again. And if someone calls again, say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. So Samuel went back to bed and the Lord came and called as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel replied, speak, your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, I'm about to do a shocking thing in Israel. I am going to carry out all my threats against Eli and his family from beginning to end. I have warned him that judgment is coming upon his family forever because his sons are blaspheming God and he hasn't disciplined them. So I have vowed that the sins of Eli and his sons will never be forgiven by sacrifice or offering. Verse 15 says, Samuel stayed in the bed until morning. Then he got up and opened the doors of the tabernacle as usual. He was afraid to tell Eli what the Lord had said to him. But Eli called out to him saying, my son, here I am, Samuel replied. What did the Lord say to you last night? What did he say? Tell me everything. And may God strike you and even kill you if you hide anything from me. So Samuel told Eli everything. He didn't hold back anything. It is the Lord's will, Eli replied. Let him do what he thinks best. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him, and everything Samuel said proved to be reliable. Amen, amen. amen. Move on a little further for me. Yeah, we don't need that one. Today I want to talk to you about why God speaks to children. I want to talk to you about why God speaks to children. Amen. This morning, I want to talk as quickly as I can about why God speaks to children. Why God speaks to children. For context, that we may understand what's happening. 
I read verse chapter 1. It's actually the story of Samuel is in actually three chapters. It is in chapter 1, 2, and 3. And it begins in chapter 1 with his mother. Her name is Hannah. And that's where I picked up our reading where she had dropped Samuel off at the temple. Hannah was in a situation, she was in a desperate situation that she was not able to have children. And so she was crying out, she was sorrowful in her heart, and she was crying out to the Lord about this issue. And she was going to worship, and while she was in worship, talking to the Lord with anguish in her heart, she was praying, her mouth was moving, but nothing's coming out of her mouth. And the Eli, Eli, the priest, comes to her and says, Hey lady, you ought not to be drunk about this time during the day. Eli, that's the preach. That's the preacher. He's in the house, not paying attention to really what's going on. He doesn't recognize what's happening. She exposes to him. She says, Sir, I am in anguish. My soul is just vexed because I do not have a child. And so I've been asking God to give me a man child. I've been talking to God about a child. And she says, I've told them this. And, and Eli, the priest, agrees with her and says, So be it unto you. And Praise the Lord, God answers prayers. Amen. Amen. And so some year, a year goes by, and Hannah does have a child by the name of Samuel. And what was so interesting about it, that Hannah just didn't pray any kind of prayer. Hannah said to the Lord, if you give me a manservant, I will give him back to you. I will dedicate him back to you. And it just was not lip service. She was serious because when she, he was old enough, he was weaned off of her. She didn't have to go get the milk every 30 minutes. When he was weaned off of her, she picked him up and they went to the house of God for their yearly sacrifice. And this time she left him there at the temple. And it wasn't an easy vacation. It was serious. She meant business. She meant to leave him in the hands of the Lord with the priest so that he may learn how to serve the Lord. Yes. And so while he's there serving the Lord, the Bible is going to tell us that there are a lot of things that are going on. Israel has not heard from God in a long time. And Israel needs to hear from God. And God in his wisdom is preparing a way that he might speak again to his people and lead them further to where he wants them to be. And so this is where we pick up in our text where God goes and, and as Eli is serving, um, Samuel is serving in the house of the Lord that chapter 3 says that he has this encounter with God that God speaks to Eli, to Samuel very clearly and he is able to get a message from the Lord for God's house and God's preacher. And that notion for us that God could use the Scholars will say that Eli is probably 12 years old when God speaks to him. The notion that God can use a child should excite us, should encourage us, should prompt us to pay attention to our children because God speaks to children. I mean, sometimes even when you can't hear from God, it's possible. Your dear child can hear from Amen. the Lord. Amen. My child has been in situations where she said some things, and I said, Lord, I hear you. I hear you. Amen. I don't have to say anything else. At least, least she thinks she's a prophet. I just go ahead and understand, Lord, I hear you. God uses the children to speak. He even says that it's perfected praise, really, that comes from children. They they praise out of a good, out of a pure, pure heart heart is where they come from. They're not polluted with what you and I have been polluted with. Amen. And once you live a good while and you endure, endure some things, ups and downs, your faults, your failures, you and I have a different particular spin on life. And we try to we try to think about that or think about this and how does that fit. And, but children, they just go for broke. Amen. They just go for broke. They're running your room. Didn't I tell you not to come in here, but you my daddy. I'm just everything in here I got access to, Amen. Pop, you know. Children just don't, they don't have that kind of should I or shouldn't I. They just know if they are loved, they are coming for your arms. If they, if they know you're giving money, they're coming for your money. If they know you're giving candy, you don't have to be related to them. You don't have, they don't have to know your name. They're coming for the candy. God speaks to children. God speaks to children. Quickly, so I don't take too long, we'll jump into it. I know you want the information. Here's three thoughts I want to leave with us. Why God speaks to children. Here's number one. God speaks to children because children are full of innocence. God speaks to children because children are full of innocence. 
They are full of innocence. Their conception was innocent. Amen. Their comprehension is innocent. God speaks to children because they are innocent. Their, con their conception is innocent. Your conception was innocent. You and I had nothing to do with when we were born, to whom we were born, why we were born. None of us had anything to do with the conditions of our birth. None of us had anything to do with the family. I know you said they're crazy, but that's where God wanted you to be born in. None of us had any say into that issue. He knew where you would be born. The Bible declares he knows the number of hairs we have on our head. He, he knows each one of us by name. And one beautiful thing is it doesn't matter where you were born or to whom you were born, the conditions you were born in, it, those things do not matter. What matters is when you give your life to the Lord. What matters is that the life you live before God. What matters is that no matter what happens in life, if you give your heart to Christ, God will take you exactly where he wanted you Amen. from the very beginning. Amen. You may have started over there, but if you leave it up to him, he'll lead, he'll lead you all the way over here. Amen. That's God's plan for our lives. Our conception is innocent. Children's conception is innocent. They had nothing to do with it. Hannah was in a tough situation. She wanted a child. She was bur burdened in the heart because she couldn't have children. I like Hannah because Hannah helps us as parents. Hannah was sincere in her devotion and her seeking unto God for what she needed. She was sincere about, you know, what is beautiful is to be sincere about the children the Lord has given unto us. Amen. 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 Want to be sincere about their lives, to be sincere about their future, Amen. to be sincere about their development, to be sincere about providing for them. Amen. She was sincere. She didn't want to get a child just to say she had one. She wanted to make sure when she got one, he would be what she, God wanted this child to be. Amen. Hannah was sincere in this thing. And so here, here comes Samuel. He's got nothing to do with this whole situation. He doesn't know how much mama loves God. He doesn't know how much God mama is praying for him. He doesn't know, he, he doesn't know the conditions that are facing him. He was born in uh, innocent conception. Not only was Hannah sincere, but Hannah was also specific in her prayers. Amen. Hannah got real specific and said, Lord, if you give me not a female child, but a male child. In those days, a male child was, was a good sign. It also meant that you know, the family name went on further. So she's asking for a male child. And she got very specific and said, not just I want a man child, but if you, if you give me this man child, Lord, and I'll devote him back to you. She was very specific about her prayers unto God. And I want you to know you and I need to be very specific about our prayers unto the Lord as well. Amen. When I pray, when we pray today, we lay our hands on our children. It's not just saying, oh, we bless the Lord, we're going to send them back. No, no, it's, it's God. I pray over my child, Lord, that they will not see things that will uh, twist their minds. God, I pray over my child, Lord, that they will not encounter evilness, Lord. That I pray that, they, that someone who has a wicked heart will not uh, expose themselves to my child. I, I get specific, and I know I know we have different beliefs and different fields and all that kind of stuff. But it, it's a hard prayer of mine. My family history has alcoholism in it, so one of my prayers is God, don't let my kids have to deal with any of that stuff. Lord, don't let them have to taste it and it grabs a hold of them. I'm praying. Listen, I know they, I know I know it's different. You 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 all in weed? That's your business. But I'm praying. I don't want my child exposed. I don't want them dealing with. I don't want to have to run him to rehab trying to get him off of something that he never should have been on to begin with. I'm just trying to tell you I'm specific and I declare you ought to be specific too. You ought to be specific about what they watch. You ought to be specific about who they're talking to. You ought to bust in their room and say, let me see your phone. And go through their phone because this is, this is serious business in this life. And in case we have not noticed, there is a hit out on children. If you don't open your eyes and see it, you are living in a cocoon. There is a hit out on children. Every time you turn on the news, you should see it. Did you not know that North Carolina it has, is in the top 10, right in the top 10 for child sex trafficking? Yes. North Carolina is in the middle between New York and Florida. It's a hot spot. You have major interstates running west, east and west, and you have major interstates running north and south. We are prime when big ball games are going on. Don't be fooled. There's child sex 
trafficking happening there, where huge events are happening, where the gospel or sports or, or all kinds of things you can think of. There are people with perverted minds who have lended yes. themselves to the hand of the devil right. and they are snatching yes. children yes. and drones. Right. If you think the devil's not after children, you are blind yes. to what's really going on. Right. Right. And if you suck in this book and ain't paying attention in the holy book, you will always stay blind oh, right. to what the enemy is trying to do to children. Right. And they're innocent is what I'm trying to tell you. Right. Hannah got specific and said, Lord, I want a male child. And then from there she got uh, sacrificial. She said, Lord, I'll give him back okay. to you. You give him to me, I'm going to give him back to you. Yeah. I like that. That means, Lord, when you give me this child... I'm going to honor you enough to bring this child back to you. And I love what Hannah did because as she gets as she gets older and she drops this young boy off at the temple, she went back every single year. Okay? She leaves him at the temple. That's all the mother's heart. She carried him for nine months now. She's leaving him at the temple. But they only came to the temple once a year to do yearly sacrifices. So every time she came to the temple, she had made a coat for him. And, and, and she just did the motherly things the best she could to show him, you know, I still love you, but you got to serve God. Yeah. And this is a part of sacrifice. Can I tell you, man, I miss these uh, the teachings from my old days, from my old people, because they would tell you, in order to serve the Lord, sometimes you got to sacrifice. Yeah, right. You just got to sacrifice. God blesses sacrifice. God blesses when you devote something to Him with all of your heart. God loves it when you give it to Him and don't take it back. Amen. He loves it when you yeah. just trust Him with what He has given you and you trust Him back. So, Lord, I devote yeah. Yeah. this thing to you. I devote my child to you. I devote my money to you. I devote what you give me. Because, Lord, I know you'll take care of it. Is everybody with me this morning? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Children are full of innocence. They're innocent to their conception. They have no, uh, Samuel had nothing to do with being born, but also innocent in their comprehension that children will believe anything you tell them. That's right. Amen. amen. Thank you for the amen. Children will believe anything you tell them. Children will believe that, uh, uh, that your will towards them is good. Amen. Your children automatically believe that they they wouldn't even think you mean to do them evil. They would they wouldn't even think you mean to neglect them. Children believe your will towards them is good. Children believe your ways towards them is good. Even if you have to discipline them, if you discipline your child in love and in the correct way, you know what happens to them. In about 30 minutes, they still come back to you. They still, Daddy, you know, ask, still asking me for something. And, and I'm mad at you. But they, 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 they don't even roll like that. Because that in them, they, their comprehension is not like our comprehension. You do me dirty, I'm going to do you dirty. You know, or even if they, even if you hit them and they hit you back, they're going to forget in, in 10 minutes. And they're back, everything's back to normal. They're not like our, it's not like our comprehension where we hold long-term grudges, you know. You have to say amen right there. They believe our will towards them is good. They believe our ways towards them is good. They also believe that our words towards them are good. That what we speak to them is good for them. Children are very innocent. That's the first thing I want you to see. God speaks to children because they're innocent. They're not tainted like us. Here's number two. Not only do children, are children full of innocence, but children follow instructions. He said, Reverend, I don't know about that one. My child, my child. I don't know about that one, Reverend. No, hang with me. Children follow instructions. God speaks to children because children follow instructions. Children, church, need parental instructions. Parental and spiritual instructors in their lives. Children need parental and spiritual instructors in their lives. Yes. And they need that because they're going somewhere. Right? They need that because they don't know it all. They, where they have to go, they need to be taught. Children don't know right from wrong till a certain age. And even then, it has to be dealt with to teach them what's, you know, you know the gray areas that we live in. You know what I'm saying? They have to be taught those things. And so, teach, parent, children need parental and spiritual instructors in their life to help them navigate through the weird stuff of life. 
I love it. Here is Hannah goes back. I can imagine what Hannah did because she couldn't spend much time with him, right? <laughs> Only once a year she got to see her boy. But I can imagine, the text doesn't say, but I, I could imagine in my mind's eye, the old preacher used to say, I could imagine that when she saw Samuel, she always reminded him how he was a gift from God. Yes. Samuel, I prayed for you, Samuel. Yeah, Samuel, I gave, I gave, I, I know you here. When Samuel would say, Mama, why you keep leaving me here? How come I can't go back with you? And she would remind me, son, I made a vow to the yeah. Lord. I made a vow to the Lord and I won't take yeah. it yeah. back. It, it, it can, and, he, and, can, and can you imagine what they did in his heart to see mama was devoted to God, being sacrificial? It put something within Samuel that Samuel was willing to be a devoted man following God's instructions to the day that he died. Yeah. And so us, the children, need spiritual instructors and parental instructors. They need to be reminded what love is. They need to be reminded. They need to see us loving them and loving each other. They need to hear us. They need to hear that we love them. They need to hear it yes. and feel it and sense it. They need yes. to be reassured that when the world doesn't love them, and yes. which I it doesn't, you. I love you. I, you. I love you. Amen. Even in all your mess-ups, I love you. Amen. Every good parent who really means business it honestly will say, I don't care what you get in, Junior. I don't care what you get in, little sister. Yes. You can come home. Amen. Well, yeah, you can come home yes. just, uh, yes. just a few stipulations. We talk about it. We talk about it. But, but, but listen, when it's life and death, I'm here for you. Yes. All right. Even if you have to go spend some time somewhere, you don't want to spend time somewhere. I, I'm your support. You understand? I mean, I can send you all the money, but know this, I'm praying for you. Yeah. I'm with you. I got your back. I'm going to be your encourager. That's the kind of thing children need to know. Even when they break your heart, they still got to know that mom and daddy loves them. Amen. Right. And they ain't got nobody else to love them. Yes, yes, yes. Am I in the house this morning? Yes. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You said, Reverend, I didn't get that. Give what you didn't get. That's right. Amen. Give what you didn't get. You reverend ain't gonna give it to me like that. I understand. That's all the more reason to yes. give yes. what you didn't get. Yes. And you could imagine what whatever you didn't get, you ought to say, I'm gonna give everything yes. I got. Whatever I didn't get, I don't have to be careful that I don't spoil them. But everything that I couldn't get and I'm able to give, I'm going to do it because I know that's what my heart would have desired. Children follow instructions. They need parental and spiritual guidance. Is everybody with me this morning? They needed spiritual guidance. So the Lord left Samuel there. Mama left Samuel in uh, the temple where he began to learn about the Lord. He left Samuel there where he began to practice he left Samuel there so he could begin to grow. Yeah, he had spiritual upbringing so he could learn how to serve God. He had spiritual upbringing so he could practice uh, his faith, practice how to serve God. And he was left there so that he might grow in the Lord. He's growing. He is, he, he is there. He is he's getting an understanding of who God is and what it means to serve him. First Samuel said that he ministered to the Lord in the presence of Eli. He was learning to serve. He, he ministered before the Lord. He was Samuel was practicing what he was learning. And then his text says he grew in the presence of the Lord. Samuel was growing in the grace of, of the Lord, learning how to serve God. And that's the way our children, watch this, while they know you love them, while they know you about their education, while they know that you're about that business of them being productive adults, they also need to know who God is. Yeah. They also need to know who God is. Yeah. So we need spiritual instructors. That's why we have youth ministries to help our children, to help parents to, 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 to pour spiritual things into our children so that they can be instructed into the ways of righteousness. Can you say amen? Yeah. Proverbs 22, 6 says, train up a child in the way that he should go, and when they are old, they will not depart from it. He says, give them training, give them understanding so that way they can hang on, hold on to what they have. But here's this issue. I'm getting close. I'm almost finished. But here's the issue. I, I'm showing you Samuel, who is someone who is having a good parent and having some good spiritual leadership. But in this text, when I read it to you, God talked about Eli's two sons, Hophni and Phinehas. Quickly, Hophni and Phinehas are two sons that you do weep over. Because the Bible says these two men were the sons of Eli. They grew up in 
the church. But yet the text will tell us, if you read Samuel 1, 2, and 3, will tell us that they did not know God. They did not know God. They served as priests. Here's a history lesson. Eli is from the Levitical priesthood. And anyone who was from the Levitical priesthood, their sons would become priests. So Eli was a priest. His sons became priests even though they did not know God. Eli's boys were serving the temple, serving in the temple. The priest stood between God and the people. The priest would offer up sacrifices to God so that God would forgive their sins, but also to forgive y'all's sins. Yeah. So, but Hophnia and Phinehas were a different breed of folk. Because when people came to offer sacrifice to the Lord, they were taking the people's sacrifice. That's one. Two, it got real dirty because when they were at the temple, there were young ladies who were serving at the temple, and they would take the young ladies and have sex with the young ladies. They were breaking all the rules and still were serving in a capacity for godly things. Just goes to show you, listen, religion is not where it's at. It's about a relationship with Almighty God. You can practice religion, but there's nothing that will take place of a relationship with God. Amen. For the text says they did not know God. They were doing something godly at times, but they did not know God. It's far more better. I want my kids to be educated. I want them to be, uh, I want them to get everything they need, the tools of the trade, whatever is needed, but I implore every one of us to be about their spiritual business yeah. as well. Yeah. You yeah. want yeah. them to have the good morals and values and character, yeah. and yeah. also, most importantly, you want them to have connection with God. Yeah. Because when the bottom of the sky falls out in life, and when things don't go your way, when the money dries up, when relationships fail, when people walk away from when life is hard, it's good to know that you still have a God who is on your side. When children experience evilness in their life, they need to know that even though it's happening, it's not the end of my world, and God is greater. Uh, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. It helps us to know that we can survive whatever it is you've got to go through. That's a lot of times why a lot of young people today cannot handle the pressures of life. We don't teach them that you're gonna have, you're gonna have, this is going to happen to you. And when life is still worth living, even though this may happen to you in your life, let me move on. I, I close with this. So we see that God speaks to children because they are full of innocence. They are they follow instructions. And then also finally, God speaks to children because children are faithful instruments in his hands. That's right. Children are faithful instruments in the hands of the Lord. That's right. Children are faithful instruments in the hands of the Lord. Man, I waver in my faith at times. You don't have to say anything. I know you don't and yours, but I waver sometimes in my faith. Sometimes I make the wrong decision. Sometimes I'm, I'm believing it's God and it's not God. Sometimes I'm, I'm struggling to discern whether it's my will or God's will. Anybody ever been like, okay, I just want to, all right, I'm in the same right church. Sometimes I, I struggle. Sometimes, uh, like Paul says, when I would do right, evil is always present. And, you know, and, and I'm intending to do the right thing. I'm, I'm telling you, I've already prayed about doing right. But by the end of the day, Lord, forgive me for the... Right. You understand? Am I in the room? Okay, y'all looking at me like y'all know what I'm talking about. All right, all right. Let me know what y'all doing so I can get where y'all at. Listen. So here they are. Here they are. God uses these children as instruments because, church, they are faithful to him. God comes to Samuel and speaks to him and tells him, I want you to do this. I want you to do this. This is going to happen. And Samuel opens his mouth and declares what God says. And Samuel learns how to obey God all the days of his life. Amen. That's simply what I want us to understand as we close here. God speaks to children because at the end of the day, they will learn how to obey God. There is nothing more important in our children's lives than them learning how to obey God. God Almighty. Because one day, watch this, God's going to speak to them. God's going to speak to them. It could be when they're very young, God's going to speak to them. Every time we expose them to Christian things, God, it's an opportunity for God to speak to them. 
every time we keep them further and further away from the things of God, it's God, I'm, we're praying God will speak to them, but it's getting mighty dark. It's getting mighty hard. I close with this somber illustration. I want to shout, but I, but I need to close with this so that we can continue to feel the brevity of what I'm talking about, the weight of what we're about to do, church. We're not just about to say, Lord, bless them and send them on their way. We're really going to pray for them. It's really that kind of serious. It was about two weeks ago on the news, Brother Roman, that I saw it, that it came out on CNN, and there were about 300 priests who had been finally exposed over all these years that had harmed they counted a thousand, but it's probably more than a thousand. And I'm looking at this, and my heart is breaking because because it, it, it's it's double whammies. Because it looks at the church and say, "Man, religion is so corrupt." That's the that's the first thing. I don't want religion. And if you hear me, I keep telling you, it's not about a religion. It's about a relationship with God. And I'm listening to the article, and, and I, I read couple of articles and run across two individuals specifically and one man he's about 80 years old and he said it happened to him 70 years ago and what happened to him he says what the priest did to him he said made it in a way that he could not show affection to his wife he said I could not even hug my children because of what someone in authority, spiritual authority, someone over me, someone who had, who imposed his will on me. I could not love my kids because of what someone else did to me. Another young lady, which gripped my heart, she said that she, this priest did what he did to her and she says she couldn't understand it. He always was after her and then finally, uh, after the things she was able to get away from him, she says, Every time I hear the name God, she says, my mind goes back to him. And I don't want anything to do with God. Hey, listen, I'm closing. I'm done. I'm just trying to tell you the brevity. I'm trying to go deep with you. Isn't that really the plan of the enemy? Think about it for a second. The fool says in his heart, there is no God. But a child, if you tell them, they'll believe it. They'll engage with it, and it's true. But let the devil come and do something that hurts their soul, that hurts their spirit, and then say, this is God's will. Okay. What will that do to the child in their minds now? What will that do to the child in their life? It, it stains them, it haunts them, it, it really it destroys the future that God had already put in place for them. And so you say, Reverend, Really? And I say absolutely. Church, we're going to pray today. We're going to pray because God wants to speak to our children. Maybe you don't have children, but I want you to get in your mind right now. You may have a niece, a nephew, somebody in your family, some youngsters in your family that God is, is, is giving, asking you to put your mind on, your attention on today. Because the children not only will need our prayers after we leave today, they will need our support the rest of this year. They're going to need you to back them up in school. They're going to need you to be that sounding board. They're going to need you at some point in time, parents, to talk about the birds and the bees. They're going to need you at some point in time to answer the questions, the hard questions they have. They're going to need you. And you could have some nieces and nephews right now that need your support right now. You don't have children. I'm, I'm asking us. I'm almost charging us to let God have his way in our lives and start reaching out for more children. Start reaching out for worship because God wants to speak to our kids. He wants to speak to our children. And one day you never know who they will be. They may not be preachers, but they could be the next Christian in the White House. Thank you for joining us. If you've enjoyed this message, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Shepherd's Way Christian Church, or visit us on our website, www.swaycc.org. That's www.swaycc.org to hear more. To connect with us, follow us on Facebook. You can join us every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. We're located at 140 East Vance Street, Zebulon, North Carolina. Again, thank you for listening.